A quick disclaimer, you should know that this tutorial is for a third party asset. That means that it has Playmaker integration, but its functionality and stability is not completely reliant on Playmaker. These tools have bugs of their own, and so you should always first consult with the developer of that tool first. Also, there may be links in the description for fixes. Hello, and welcome to the Pixel Crushers dialogue system tutorial. In this video, we're gonna be learning how to do some of the basics with Pixel Crushers dialogue system. So first of all, you're gonna to want to come up and import your dialogue system asset. Come over here to dialogue system for Unity. You'll want to hit your download button first if you haven't downloaded it already. And then when it is downloaded, you can hit the import button. I already have mine, so I'm just gonna go ahead and close this, but just make sure that you import after you download. So once you have the dialogue system asset imported into your project, you can come down here to your project folders, come over to plugins, and then you can come over here to pixel crushers, and then in pixel crushers, you have dialogue system, and then in dialogue system, you have third-party support. Now in here is where you'll have all the packages for third-party support. What we want is the Playmaker support, so it's right here. Now you can just go ahead and double click that. And since I've already imported the package, it says there's nothing left to import, but you would just hit import down here. I'm just gonna click okay. And so once that's imported, you should be able to come over to your actions browser and you'll see the category for dialogue system. The dialogue system has a ton of actions. Now we're just gonna go over a handful of these today to get you through the basics. But before we even get to the actions, we need to set the scene up to use dialogue system. I'm just gonna adjust some of my scene over here so I can see my inspector a little bit better. And I'm going to dock this project tab over here. So I'm just gonna go over to tools, pixel crushers, dialogue system, wizards, dialogue manager wizard. Okay, and that just brings up this tab that we're gonna be using. So, and you'll see that the dialogue manager wizard just says, this wizard will help you configure the dialogue manager game object. What it's talking about is a game object loaded up with some components that is necessary to use the dialogue system. So you can just click this button, add prefab right here, and it'll automatically add it to your scene. So you have it right here now. Okay, and you can see all the components that it's loaded up with. So now that you have a dialogue manager in your scene, what we want is a new database. A dialogue database is the type of file that has all of the conversations and variables and other information that dialogue system uses to create all of your dialogue. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new one. Okay, so you'll see that it populated this little slot here. And if I click on it, you can see where it gets added. It just got added to the root of my assets folder. To keep things nice and organized, I'm gonna drag and drop this into my dialogue system folder that for the scene that I'm working on right now. Okay, so you can see I just dropped it in here. And I'm gonna rename it to, so the naming convention for your database is dependent on however your project is organized. So you might just have one for your game that's just called the title of your game and then dialogue database, or maybe you have it per scene. For this tutorial, I'm just gonna call this tutorial dialogue database. Okay, you can see that it's up here. It changed the name too. Now, after that's set up, I'm gonna hit next. The dialogue user interface is gonna be using this prefab that they have, so you could change the interfaces. We're just gonna keep this one for now. Hit next. And all this looks pretty good. I can hit next, next, next. Okay, so now I can come over to tools, pixel crushers, dialogue system, dialogue editor, and I'm gonna dock this right here. So let's set up our first conversation. First thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is come over to our actors and we already have player. You'll see that if I select inside this box for player, over here in the inspector, we could see that it has an ID one, the name is player. It gives us an option to use display name and some other features here. So you could use textures for the portraits. You can imagine a little portrait next to each character when they're talking. The portrait sprite itself, you could use a custom node color, so you could change colors of your interface, and then this bool value for is player. Okay, so these are the values that come with actor. We'll go over something from here later. The description is up to you, but it's not necessary. Now over here on the right, you can see a little plus and minus. For us, we're just gonna hit this plus to add a new actor. Actors are just the characters in your games that you can create the conversations between. So for new actor, I'm actually gonna change this one to Lloyd. We have player and Lloyd. Now that we have a couple people to actually have a conversation between, we can go over to conversations. Now you'll see that it gives us this grid view and there's currently nothing in it. That's because we haven't created a conversation yet. To create a conversation, you can hit this little plus button. And you'll see that when I hit the plus button, it populates this graph with the first node, the start node. Now, because there's only one node here, the start is also the end. 
So if I click on this, see it, it highlights it blue, that means I have it selected, and you can see more values over here on the side. Put in menu text and dialogue text. So for example, this first node, the dialogue text could be, hello. Okay, and you'll see that it's represented over here. You can also double click on a node and just enter your dialogue like this. Hi, my name is Lloyd. Okay, so that's the first line of dialogue. If I right click this and create child node, you'll see that it creates a node right underneath it. And now this has the end on it. I can double click on this and say goodbye. So I'll show you this conversation in action in just a moment. But the first thing I wanna do is click here in the grid itself, okay? And you see up here, it just has new conversation. By default, the conversation just gets called that, new conversation one. And if you keep making them, it'll say new conversation two, et cetera, et cetera. So just to keep things organized, I'm gonna come over here to the inspector after having clicked here in the graph, right? In this area, I'm gonna come over to the inspector and you'll see that title is where our title is. So I'm just gonna call this first simple conversation. Okay, now we've completed our first simple conversation. We've given it a title. We have the first line of dialogue and the second line of dialogue. You'll see also that over here we have actor and conversant. So these are the two people that are having the conversation. To actually start this conversation is very simple. So I'm gonna go over to our scene really quick and I'm just going to create a empty, okay? Because this can be put on anything. You could put it on an NPC, you could put it on a piece of environment in the world. But for this one, I'm just gonna call this one our conversation starter. So with it selected, I'm gonna hit the Playmaker tab and I'm gonna add an FSM. And the action I wanna put in is over here. We can start conversation. Simple enough, right? Pretty straightforward. And the value here, you can have reference database and it'll have a little drop down menu and you could select your conversation. First simple conversation. Okay, so if I play the game right now, let me just open up this little tab a little bit. The conversation starts and, and stops as soon as I run it. I mean, let me show you what this looks like with a delay. So I'm just gonna put this in a separate state and I'm gonna put a wait action on this one and we'll just wait two seconds before finishing and actually going to the state where it starts the conversation. Okay, so you can see it start. Starts here, waits two seconds, and then starts the conversation. Okay, so let's play that now. And you can see up here when it starts, waits two seconds, and it goes so fast, it just looks like it only says goodbye. That's because we set up our conversation essentially to be a monologue. It's just one thing after another and no options to go through it. So if we come over to our dialogue tab, in this conversation, let's rearrange this a little differently. We're gonna call this one we're gonna keep this one as our start. And in here, we're gonna say, hi, my name is Lloyd. And then from here, we're gonna right click, and create child node. And you'll see that this one is now blue. This is for the player to respond. So in this one, we could say, hi Lloyd. And if we come over here and right click on this one again and create another child node, see we make another blue one that's another option for the player and we could say goodbye and these little red triangles signify the end of the conversation so if we just scooch this over and play that now Lloyd says hi my name is Lloyd and then we're given the options hi Lloyd and goodbye so if I say hi Lloyd it just ends because that's just where both of them end, right? So the thing that you could do now is add or options to these. So I can right click on Hyloid and we'll create a child node. And you'll see that this one is gray. Now this is Lloyd's response. So in this one, what you could say is, how are you doing? And from here, you can create another child node and you could say, I'm fine. Or you can create another child node and say, I'm not doing so well. Right click right here, arrange nodes, and we'll say vertically, and it organizes them nicely. Okay, so let's try running this one now. Hi, my name is Lloyd. And you can say, hi Lloyd. And he says, how are you doing? And you could say, I'm fine, or I'm not doing so well, and that's where it ends. Okay, so it's pretty easy to set up a dialogue tree, right? 
that's the basics. We have the basics down. And you could see that with this action, start conversation, you literally just put this anywhere that you want to start the conversation. So for example, if you're using our interaction templates, the templates available on the ecosystem where our player controllers shoot a ray cast out in front of them, and then whatever it is that they hit, they send an interact event. Interacting with an NPC could just have a start conversation, okay? Because this wait could also just be a key down. And we'll say like space bar. Okay, so when I play this, I know it's painfully obvious, but I just want to illustrate my point that it doesn't really matter what sends off the conversation. Let me just make sure that sends an event finished. Okay, so when I hit space, that's what starts the conversation. Now what's cool about the start conversation action is that it gives you the option to use a variable. So if I check this little box, you'll see that the drop down menu went away and now it gives us an option for variable and unclicking it puts us back into using this drop down. Okay, so if you use variable, what it's looking for is we'll create a new variable and we'll call this one conversation name. Now currently this value is empty, so if I right click on this and hit edit variable, it brings us over to the variables tab, and the value that we could put in is the name of our conversation. So for example, this one, if I go over to the dialogue, our first simple conversation, right, this one, I can copy this text, then come over to our FSM, and I'm gonna paste that in the value, first simple conversation, right? So now you can see that the conversation's gonna start is this one that's named that. And of course, play this, let me just change this to that. Okay, when I play this, we're no longer using that drop down menu, instead we're using a variable, a string variable, and if I hit space, it does the same thing. Okay, so this is a way that you could sort of programmatically choose which conversations you're queuing up. This is a very powerful little feature here. So that's the basic setup for having a conversation in the dialog system. In the next videos, we're gonna be going over how to programmatically set certain values within the conversation. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.